Hi everyone, I'm going to go over the 27 evidence-based practices for autism spectrum disorder. So these 27 practices are um, come from a 2014 report that was supported by the United States Department of Education, the Office of Special Education Programs, the National Professional Development Center on Autism Spectrum Disorders, and the Institute of Education Science. So the purpose of this report was to describe a process for the identification of evidence-based practices and also to delineate practices that have sufficient empirical support to be termed evidence-based. So the first evidence-based practice is antecedent-based interventions. So that's the arrangement of events or circumstances that precede the occurrence of an interfering behavior and designed to lead to the reduction of the behavior. Cognitive behavioral intervention. Instruction on management or control of cognitive process that leads to changes in overt behavior. It's based on the premise that thoughts create feelings, feelings create behavior, and that behavior reinforces thoughts. Differential reinforcement of alternative, incompatible, or other behaviors. So the provision of positive, desirable consequences for the behavior or their absence that reduce the occurrence of an undesirable behavior. So reinforcement is provided when the learner is engaged in a specific desired behavior other than the in inappropriate behavior, or when the learner is engaged in a behavior that's physically impossible to do while exhibiting the inappropriate behavior, or when the learner is not engaged in the interfering behavior. Discrete trial tr teaching. Instructional process usually involves one teacher, service provider, and one student client and designed to teach appropriate behavior or skills. So it starts with an instruction, look at me, a student responds, the student looks, and then a reinforcer is provided. Exercise. Exercise is an increase in physical exertion as a means of reducing problem behaviors or increasing appropriate behaviors. It's also been shown to reduce challenging behaviors and increase student, increase student engagement. Extinction. It's removing reinforcements to curb an undesirable behavior. Functional behavioral assessment. It's the systematic collection of information about an interfering behavior designed to identify functional contingencies that support the behavior. So a functional behavioral assessment will consist of direct ob observation, informant methods such as interviews and questionnaires, and a functional analysis that looks at the antecedents and consequences, and those are manipulated to understand their effects. Functional communication training. Replacement of an interfering behavior that has a communication function with a more appropriate communication that accomplishes the same function. So for example, um, a child exhibits a behavior of hitting his mother. The function of that behavior is the child wants to go for a ride in the car. So the functional communication training that would take place is we would teach the child how to sign car as a request. Naturalistic interventions. Intervention strategies that occur within the typical setting, activities, routines in which the learner participates. Teachers, service providers establish the learning, learner's interest in learning event through arrangement of the setting, activity, or routine, provide necessary support for the learner to engage in the targeted behavior, elaborate on the behavior when it occurs, and or arrange natural consequences for the targeted behavior or skill. Parent Implemented Intervention. Parents provide individualized intervention to their child to improve or increase a wide variety of skills and or to reduce interfering behaviors. Parents learn to deliver interventions in their home and or the community through a structured parent training program. Peer Mediated Instruction and Intervention. So typically developing peers interact with and or help children or our youth with autism spectrum disorder to acquire new behaviors, communication, and social skills by increasing social and learning opportunities within the natural environment. And so teachers or service providers may systematically teach peer strategies for engaging children and youth with ASD in a positive and extended social interaction in both teacher-directed and learner-initiated activities. Pivotal response training. Pivotal learning variables. For example, motivation, responding to multiple cues, self-management, and self-initiations guide intervention practices that are implemented in the setting that build on a learner's 
interests and initiative. Response, interruption, or redirection. Introduce, introduction of a prompt, comment, or other distractor when an interfering behavior is occurring that's designed to divert the learner's attention away from the interfering behavior and results in its re reduction. So um, an example would be interrupt the problem behavior, redirect the student towards appropriate behavior, reinforce approximations of the appropriate behavior. Self-management, instruction focusing on learners' discrimination between appropriate and inappropriate behaviors, accurately monitoring and recording their own behaviors, and rewarding themselves for behaving appropriately. And I found this um, great visual to help with self-management, where the learner can um, check this off as they go throughout their day. Structured playgroup. Small group activities characterized by their occurrence in a defined area with a defined activity, the specific selection of typically developing peers to be in the group, a clear delineation of theme and roles by adult leading, prompting, or scaffolding as needed to support students' performance related to the goals of the activity. So these next ones I'm going to go through pretty fast because um, Professor um, has covered all of these in class pretty much. So reinforcement, an event, activity, or other circumstances occurring after a learner engages in a desired behavior that leads to increased occurrence of the behavior. And I really love this picture. I had to include it because it says, if you've met one child with autism, you've met one child. The same holds true for reinforcers. They're very individual. One size does not fit all. And it's just a kind of a reminder to me, like you really need to know your student and get to know what is reinforcing to them to make it work. Um, PEX, we went over this a lot in class. Modeling, we went over modeling in class. Prompting, I think everyone in class was familiar with prompting. Um, last week, we went over social skills training. Scripting, um, Professor James went over this last week with us. Um, social narratives, we all did a little in-class activity last week on this one. Um, task analysis, everyone um, was familiar with this. We went over this in class as well. Technology aided instruction and intervention. Um, one of our guest speakers went over um, technology in um, depth, so I think everyone's familiar with that. Um, time delay, it's where you're just waiting um, and giving the learner time to respond to um, in cues or instructions. Um, video modeling, we went over this in class, we've talked about that. And visual supports, I think everyone's familiar with this, um, we went over this in class too. And these are my references. All right, thanks everyone.